This week on Cisco Ebert, golfers Kevin Costner and Don Johnson compete for Rene Russo in Tin Cup. James Woods is a serial killer in Killer, a Journal of Murder. And battling parents Jamie Lee Curtis and Kevin Pollack get tough love in House Arrest. inspired me to get here and also caused me to get the shanks which could humiliate me in front of a billion zillion people in a game I used to used to know how to play pretty good Kevin Costner plays a down-and-out golf pro who gets one more chance to become a champion in the romantic comedy Tin Cup I'm Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times and I'm Gene Sisko of the Chicago Tribune Tin Cup is the nickname of Kevin Costner's character and it does fit because He's never won a gold cup. No, he has a destructive streak that has kept him off the PGA Tour. So he operates a rundown tumbleweed Texas driving range, drinking, betting, carousing with his down and out friends until a beautiful woman stops by for a golf lesson. And here's a lovely poem to the sport. Slowly and slowly, the club head is led back, pulled into position, not by the hands, but by the body, which turns away from the target, shifting weight to the right side without shifting balance. Tempo is everything, perfection unattainable. As the body coils now to the top of the swing, there's a slight hesitation, a little nod to the gods. A, a nod to the gods? Yeah, to the gods, that he is fallible. That's Rene Russo perfection doing her very best work in her way. very He's best role. And at their second lesson That's together, Kevin Costner is about to get a real shock as he finds out that her boyfriend is his hated golfing arch rival, a successful touring pro played by Don Johnson. Get your hands off her, Roy. Hi, honey. Hi, darling. But Costner persists and confesses his affection for Russo at her office. She's a psychotherapist. Some good comic screwball writing here that does take advantage of Kevin Costner's slightly checkered off-screen image right now. Dr. Griswold. I think I'm in love with you. What? From the moment I first saw you, I knew I was through with bar girls and strippers and motorcycle chicks. And when you first started talking, I was smitten with you. And I'm smitten with you more every day I think about you. And the fact that you know I'm full of crap only makes you even more attracted to me. Another terrific character in the film is played by Cheech Marin, playing Costner's best buddy and advisor. How'd I do that? Because you're not thinking about shanking. You're not thinking about the doctor, lady. You're not thinking, period. That's it? Yeah, that's it. Your brain was getting in the way. Tin Cup was co-written and directed by Ron Shelton, who has helped create the very best sports movies, Bull Durham and White Men Can't Jump, and this is another in that series I recommend it strongly. I recommend it strongly, too, Gene. I love the writing. I love the depth of the characters. Yeah. And I also love, and I'm going to be very careful here not to give away anything, I love the way that the climax was not predictable right. and the way that it showed the stubborn individualistic streak of this guy who would mm -hmm. rather, as they say, rather be right than president. I, I use the word poetry, a yeah. poem to golf. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When was the last time you had an, an American script that was poetic? Mm -hmm. They, they, never, they don't even try when to you're, get to that when level. When your swing connects, it's like a tuning fork goes off in your heart. I mean, even if you've never played golf, you can identify with this. Beautiful job. And, and Rene Russo really uh, yeah, uh -huh. declares herself as somebody. She's not just a body. She's yeah. got a great one, but she's also an actor. I really enjoyed it. Okay, next movie. And our next movie was also intended, I guess, as a romantic comedy. But House Arrest is neither romantic nor a comedy. It's about two kids who are so shaken up by the news that their parents are going to separate that they solve things by locking them into the basement. The parents are played by Jamie Lee Curtis and Kevin Pollack. They got my tools! And the phone's gone too. Oh my God! Boarded up the windows? And that's just the beginning because as the news spreads among the local school kids, several of them decide that their parents could also benefit from some time locked away to work out their differences. Push your feet! Push your feet! We got it! Thank you! 
Eventually, there gets to be a traffic jam in the basement and in the movie as another parent turns up, a sex spot played by Jennifer Tilly. Uh, everybody's right down here. Yeah. Go ahead. That That's your mom. Is this a PTA meeting? The parents fight back. Knowing how much modern kids depend on electricity for all of their gadgets, Pollock shuts off the juice. Electricity, no Nintendo, no MTV. I've already thought of it. It won't work. It will work. Two hours without electricity, they'll be screaming for their mommies. Two hours without electricity, and we are going to be screaming while they burn down the house with matches. House Arrest is one of the most ungainly, unfunny, and unnecessary movies I've seen in a long while. I can easily imagine how it might have been funny to lock all the parents in the basement, but only if you wanted to do something clever and original with them instead of having them bluster and posture through an endless series of predictable gags and tired dialogue. Make the parents smart. Make the kids smart. Make it more real, and you might have had something. This is a very tired formula movie without one ounce of daring. It was really tough. To sit through this picture. This is really bad filmmaking, and I don't even know if the concept could work. In other words, if you have kids, I assume this picture is made for kids. Certainly parents don't want to see a picture no, no, about no. parents being locked in, especially quarrelsome parents. No. Okay, so if it's about kids, what do they want to do? They want to put the parents in the basement and then go have fun themselves, right? I guess, yeah. They well, don't want to see the parents downstairs fighting. You know, make it Ferris Bueller's day off for yeah. everybody in the neighborhood, if you will, uh -huh. but the, the, no one wants to see yeah. unhappy parents in a, trapped in a Especially small space. Especially kids. That's just what you want to see when you're 10 years old, right? A movie about parents who want to get a divorce. That's just what Terrible. you'd like to see. Coming up next, James Woods plays an unrepentant criminal in Keller, A Journal of Murder. I do not intend to plead for pity or sympathy or mercy. What I demand is justice. You created me. Now you kill me. The movie event of the summer is here. What? Why? And it's making its premiere only on video. Yes! Aladdin and the King of Thieves. You're back and you're front. You're both here. The exciting final chapter in the Aladdin trilogy. This is it. Game's over, man. Robin Williams returns as the genie who grants you a thousand laughs. Hakuna Matata. What? Oh, it's having an out-of-movie experience. It's the fastest and funniest movie of the summer. <laughs> Aladdin and the King of Thieves. On sale now in stores everywhere. Can a stick of gum break the ice? Ice breakers. Taste it. Ooh, my breath feels a lot fresher. It's because of these tiny mint capsules. They release these special breath fresheners. Breath fresheners in a gum. Wow. 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 Ice breakers gum. It really breaks the ice. You twist now. <laughs> we'll work on your farm. <laughs> Only Oreo. For you, being here is like being in a dark room when you're a kid. The lights are out. There's a spook chill on the radio. You're close, but not too close to all those things inside you that you can't let out. It scares you. And you like being scared. An odd friendship develops between a well-meaning prison guard and a hardened criminal in that scene from our next film, the thought-provoking picture called Killer, A Journal of Murder. The inmate turns out to be more than just a career criminal, however. He's a serial murderer of 21 people. And this true story begins in the 1920s as a sensitive young Jewish man played by Robert Sean Leonard brings a social conscience to his work. On this job, he meets an inmate with a fierce temper, to say the least, played by James Woods. You're a brave man, Mr. Lesser. But don't ever do this again. Don't you ever turn your back on me. Now, reaching out to this killer is obviously perilous, but the murder is somehow touched at some level in a story about kindness tendered possibly too late in a man's life. Breaking the rules, the guard provides pencil and paper to the convict, and the result is a diary that covers his life as a victim of abuse as well as a murderer. The diary finds an admirer in high literary circles. This is one of the most amazing documents I've ever read. Obviously, printing it in a general magazine would be impossible. I doubt, too, that it could be done as a book. However, I thank you for sending me the manuscript. I can't recall ever reading anything more shocking. Sincerely, H. L. Mencken. I wish Killer, a journal of murder, had taken us deeper into the journal itself, which is always being described by others as fascinating, but we don't get to hear that much of it. 
And yet the relationship between these two men is very real and provocative thanks to the strong performances by Robert Sean Leonard and by James Woods. And to our wonderment, we try to sit there and say, is it ever too late to try and understand a soul, even a soul that has killed many, many people? A marginal recommendation for me on Killer, A Journal of Murder. I agree the performances are good, Gene, but I can't recommend the movie. And I'll tell you why. I don't think this movie really delved into the motives that the guard had for making a friend out of the worst prisoner at that time right. in the American prison system. I went back and did some research on this yeah. guy. Uh, at one point, he rented a yacht and killed all ten sailors and threw them overboard. At another point, he went to Africa, hired six people to uh, hunt crocodiles with him, yeah. killed them, and fed them to the crocodiles. Yeah. I mean, None this of this guy, is in the picture. No, that's not in the picture. This is a real, real, real bad guy. And oh. it's almost as if, in a sense, this guard is acting out some kind of quasi... Uh, saintly or maybe even erotic relationship with evil. He's like it's fascinated by evil, and I, the movie is never no, frank about that. No, I think it's very clear. Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm reviewing what's up on the screen. I know that he's killed 21 people, so yeah, I didn't no. think he was a good guy at all, no, whether they were no. crocodiles or sailors or anybody else. <laughs> uh, so I think that's irrelevant, frankly. The next point is it's very clear. We have a long preamble about who this kid is. He comes from a family yeah. of, with a social conscious. He believes in that. Mm -hmm. He is a liberal, to say the least. Yeah. And he comes to this world, and he thinks he can do something. He also comes yeah, from a why poor, does he go to working the, class family. Why, and he wants why a job. does he go to the superstar bad guy? Why not go to somebody who might he be able to be rehabilitated? Roger, somebody you're not, you're not focusing on the movie. He doesn't know who he's meeting. He meets a guy. He sees him act out. And he learns later on. He doesn't think the guy is a killer in the beginning. Now, once he's tendered kindness and gotten some cues, he's supposed to back off oh. and be punitive. That's what the movie's There's about. There's a movie coming up later on this show called Butterfly Kiss about a serial killer and an enabler right. that I think is a lot more insightful into the motives in a relationship. That's like a better that. movie, but this is still a good one. When we come back, two kids try to rescue their dad in the wilderness in Alaska. Lucky Larry here with the lovely early keeping time to Crystal's new one two three dollar deals for a dollar get a crystal and a small coke for two dollars get four crystals and a small coke and for three dollars get six crystals and a small coke but hurry these one two three dollar deals won't last long oh no not the deal the one two three dollar deals for a limited time only at Crystal my arms are killing me. My butt is really killing me. We have to go through there. Their dad is a bush pilot in Alaska, and after his plane is lost in a storm and search parties can't find him, his son and daughter go on an odyssey of their own in the new movie Alaska, which is in the old tradition of real-life nature adventures, but which I found surprisingly entertaining. In the movie, 13-year-old Thora Birch and Vincent Carthizer as her 15-year-old brother are up against dangerous odds as they make their way into the Alaskan wilderness. They're befriended along the way by a polar bear cub that becomes their guide and inspiration. But the villains in the movie, poachers played by Charlton Heston and Duncan Fraser, are also following the little bear. I don't think you understand me. Let me be clear. I'm accustomed to getting what I want. I want that bear. How do modern kids climb a mountain? Well, the same way they see it done on TV. Blame me. What? If I slip, hold the rope. Okay. Wait a sec. Are you sure this is how they do it? How they do it on ESPN. Amazingly, they do find their father, but then the dangers only multiply. Here, pass on your waist. Your descenders. What? The descenders is yellow face. Come under your rope. Alaska belongs to a genre I guess you could call kids on a quest in the wilderness, and I hope it doesn't inspire its young audiences to try to make friends with the bears at Yellowstone next summer. But the movie is beautifully photographed and acted in a convincing, straightforward way by the young stars, and on its own level, I enjoyed it. I imagine it's targeted at kids up to about 13, and I think a lot of them are going to love it. Well, first of all, Roger, I think this, you know how you always say to me, you missed the boat on this one when we uh -huh. come far? You missed the harbor. This is... I think one of the most laughably bad pictures I've seen in a long time. Uh, incredible. I, how can you say okay, that? Be, I'll say how. Oh. The father is in a plane wreck. Yeah. Uh -huh. He's far away. Now, the whole story develops with them and the bear cub and all that. Mm -hmm. 
You know that the word father, I clocked this, the word father, and this is the movie, not other research, <laughs> the, quote, the, father, the word father is never mentioned for 40 minutes in this picture. They so never what? They're not talking or acting remotely really like, remotely like kids who's lost their father and trying to find Your criticism of this movie is utterly irrelevant to the experience oh, of the no, film no, no. on the screen no, no. and would be meaningless Why? to anyone Why? seeing the film. What? You mean you wouldn't you wouldn't be it wasn't meaningless to me. You're, I saw you're, it. You're imagining a totally different picture that should have done something no, else. No, no, no. What? Be, be it remotely Did real? It, would you have How liked about it? this? How about the Would you the have plane? liked it better if there had been a lot of talk about the father instead of the stuff about the bear cub? Uh, some talk there should have been about the father. And how about this? The plane is plainly visible where it's wrecked. And there are passes it by. It obviously by. isn't plainly visible to the search plane. That's why it didn't no, find it. It's plainly visible to the search plane that would be a normal you search gotta, plane. You didn't, Wait a minute. The, you didn't give your sympathy to this movie. Roger, you, you, you when you describe, when you, I'm not Nick Fam, I'm a major story. And, and uh, the acting, well, sure the acting by of, Charlton has A lot been. of 10 year old kids are going to be saying, gee, right. they didn't. Uh, and now, Roger, you focus on my third point, mm -hmm. and that's this. You seem to be reviewing this picture, and I've seen it uh, other times, of what kids will think. And, you, and you, I want to remind you of something you I enjoyed you it too, Gene, and I enjoyed you Charles enjoyed Heston, it? to get ahead of you here. Yeah. I thought that that's, that stuff was kind of really? funny in a satiric way. Okay. He's playing against time. I just want you to say that you really enjoyed it yourself. I did enjoy this okay. movie. I enjoyed this movie. Okay. Coming up next, Butterfly Kiss, a tough love story between a meek young woman and her outrageous friend who kills in a religious rave. Here are some rich snack suggestions from the Big Apple Dance Studio. What is this? Just some of the more sophisticated flavors, a little pate. Started with a Ritz cracker, put some peanut butter, a dollop of chocolate over a uh, banana. Everybody eats their Ritz differently. You're not limited like you are with a chip. You can just pile it on because you got a nice stable platform to build your uh, snack on top of. I'm going to eat this. Power of Voila. Ritz, open a box, make up a snack. We're here with Vlad the Impaler. How you doing? Who's still in the dark ages and won't switch to Gladlock zipper bag. I'm an old-fashioned guy. Well, Vladster, what if we reupholster your coffin here with this garlic soup <laughs> in either your bag or the Gladlock bag with the yellow and blue make green seal? Your bag doesn't have a green seal. Yeah. Why was this progress? Use the Gladlock. When it really counts, uh, no pun intended, get Gladlock. Now, let's talk thick, juicy steaks. Let's not. How about chops? All right, that's good. That chops is good. Butterfly Kiss is a challenging movie, a study of a deeply troubled female killer who wanders across northern England and finally meets another woman who loves her and will remain devoted to her throughout a very, very long killing spree. Here the disturbed killer, played by Amanda Plummer, first encounters the shy, empathetic woman played by Saskia Reeves. Something to do with love. I just can't remember who sang it. Well, we've classic love songs and we've songs of love. They're both out over there. It had a piano in it that went. I'll let just ring a bell. We follow the two lovers on the road and can only conclude that what holds them together is that they supply a missing part of each other's life. Compassion for one, thrills for the other. Look, look, I dug a hole and everything. I never asked you to. No, I know. I, just... I wanted it left out where everyone could see. Did I not say? No, you didn't, but I... You ruined it now. And I'll have to do it again. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I am. I just, you know, I just wanted to help. I just wanted to show you, you know, that... Show me what? That, that I like you, that I like to do things for you. As for Amanda Plummer's killer character, she's riddled with self-loathing and guilt and anger, wearing body chains and clips under her outfits. Butterfly Kiss is a very graphic adults-only movie that many people will find shocking. God has forgotten me! God has forgotten me! He's forgotten! Unfortunately, we can't show you the more explicit scenes of sex and violence in the picture. It's too bad because the challenge of Butterfly Kiss is whether you can look past the violence and into these characters' troubled minds. I did, even though I didn't like the artificial structure of the film, which is intercut with confessional remarks in a police station by that nice woman that I think interrupt the story. Also, a little bit of the violence goes a long way in Butterfly Kiss, but I admire tremendously the bravery of Amanda Plummer's performance in a most challenging character. Uh, I agree with you that the flash 
backs from the police station don't work and aren't necessary. I would have liked and, the story just not, to have been and told. And not well acted either. From beginning to end. No, because she seems to be acting there, and she Absolutely. never seems to be acting anywhere else in the exactly movie. Exactly right. And what's interesting, of course, is both of these people have mental problems. The nice woman is is uh, a little bit slow. And so these two incomplete people come together and somehow make a functioning whole, although the way they function is very bad for society. And yet at the same time, they both have such a need that we really identify with the pain that's there and with the, with the striving that's there. Now, at one point sure. she says, I always look for the good in everyone. It's really right. ironic. Now, uh, I want to get to an issue. Take this picture and kill her, the mm -hmm. other one with James Woods. I'm sure that people will hear our descriptions and think, and even if after you've seen the pictures, yeah. why does the American cinema, why does the world cinema, for, it's English, why does the world cinema focus on these, quote, despicable characters? Because we are fascinated. There is nothing more fascinating than evil. Maybe the provocative question to ask is, why can't stories be written? Why can't we find the drama in good characters? We somehow can't seem to find it. It isn't captivating and it can't be sold in a 30-second TV Because ad. there isn't a lot of conflict. conflict. Of course. When we come back, our video pick of the week. A better family adventure set in Alaska. HBO Pictures presents the epic saga of New York's most notorious mobster. You think I was putting this up to make them rich and me poor? He defied the law. You're making him come after you. You know, in the end, made that guy with respect for him. And ruled a city like no one had before. Armando Sante. Gotti. Coming this month, only on HBO. You twist now. We'll work on your farm. <laughs> Only Oreo. Hey, Snackwell's guy, you lost? <laughs> no, this is Snackwell's non-fat chocolate yogurt. <laughs> Who's gonna buy chocolate yogurt? <laughs> <laughs> now try new Snackwell's milk chocolate and milk chocolate caramel nut. If your summer could use a little fun, drive into Sonic. Where else can you find old-fashioned shakes in this many flavors? Chocolate, creamy vanilla, pineapple, fresh banana, and strawberry. Add a famous Sonic burger and you've got the burger and shake special. Right now, just $2.49. So drive into Sonic and get a taste of what summer's all about. Cisco and Ebert's Video Pick of the Week, brought to you by Orville Redenbacher's Gourmet Popping Corn, the best part of the movies. While I was watching and enjoying the new movie Alaska, I was reminded for our video segment of another movie set in the 49th state that is also good family entertainment. It's a 1991 movie named White Fang, based on the classic novel by Jack London about a sled dog that's half wolf, half dog, and all heart. The movie opens in Gold Rush days with the arrival in the Yukon of a 16-year-old played by Ethan Hawke, who has come up north to prospect his dad's claim. The boy's early days in Alaska are intercut with the early days of White Fang, who was orphaned and then found by Indians and traded to men who want to use him in dogfights before finally he becomes the companion to the movie's young hero. Huh? Huh? I'm sorry? If you're looking for a superior family film, White Fang is a good choice. It's my video pick of the week. Now let's take another look at the movies we reviewed this week. Two thumbs up for Tin Cup, the good-humored golf movie with Kevin Costner as a broken-down pro scheming for a comeback. Rene Russo is terrific. Two big thumbs down, however, for the dismal would-be comedy House Arrest, which was a waste of time for everyone concerned. A split vote on Killer, a journal of murder about the odd relationship between a prison guard and a killer. Gene found the relationships between the characters to be emotional. I felt the movie didn't really deal with the true nature of their relationship. A big split vote on Alaska, a colorful, entertaining family adventure, according to me, but Gene felt the kids forgot that they were looking for their father. And finally, two big thumbs up for the challenging and very dark butterfly kiss. 
and for the uncompromising performances by Amanda Plummer as a deranged killer and Saskia Reeves as the simple girl who falls under her spell. That's it for this week. Next week, we'll be back with reviews of more new movies, including a very Brady sequel starring Shelley Long and Gary Cole in the further adventures of the stuck-in-the-70s Brady Bunch. You have grown up to be so gorgeous. I know. And Jan... Isn't Marsha gorgeous? And also Robert Altman's Kansas City, starring Jennifer Jason Lee as a desperate woman trying to ransom her husband from gangster Harry Belafonte. That's next week, and until then, the balcony is closed. Discover a whole new world online with America Online, the easy, fun way to explore. To get your free 15-hour trial with no obligation, call 1-800-249-9700. Give it a try. Don't miss the first official James Bond Festival, October 23rd through 27th in Ocho Rios, Jamaica, with deluxe accommodations at the Renaissance Jamaica Grand. Call 1-800-MONTIGO. Dentine gum. In less than 60 seconds, Dentine's tingly taste will make your breath feel fresh and clean. Brush your breath with Dentine. By refinancing your mortgage at the money store, you can lower your interest rate and reduce your monthly payments, even if your credit is less than perfect. Call 1-800-LOAN-YES. Thank you.